Thanks, AJ. Certainly uh, looking forward to this weekend. Uh, you know, if you're a player or you're a coach and the hockey business, you know, March is a fun time of year as you enter the playoffs. Obviously, having last weekend off, uh, not having to play in the first round uh, gives us an opportunity to uh, work on some things and uh, get ourselves prepared for this weekend. And, you know, the interesting part is uh, you step into an area now that, you know, is not similar to your regular season games it's one and done and so the rest of the way you know if you win you get another game so obviously if we're successful saturday you get an opportunity to play sunday for a championship and another trophy and certainly the players and the coaching staff are looking forward to the opportunity uh, uh to play saturday afternoon against duluth todd I would guess at this time of the year that week off can be an advantage or a disadvantage depending on how you use it. How did you use it? Uh, were there some specific things you tried to do to, to use that time to make it an advantage by the time you play on Saturday? Well, the big thing is, uh, you know, to try to get yourself as healthy as possible this time of season. So, you know, as we entered the week, you, you know, you look at some scenarios and then, you know, do you need to practice every day? Uh, you know, my philosophy is no. And so you look at managing your practices and trying to get, you know, some things out of it that uh, that are going to be helpful as you get ready for your game, If you know, whether it's 8, 10, 12 days down the road. So uh, we managed it well. Uh, you know, had a opportunity both Friday and Saturday afternoon to do some things that, you know, would be equivalent, uh, if you can get to equivalent, uh, as far as a game weekend. Uh, we've done that in the past, and, you know, and you know, as you leave the rink Saturday afternoon, you feel pretty good about the way the week has presented itself, and the, you know, you, you take that from you know, what you're seeing on the ice, and you know, the players' energy levels. So, you know, again, when you play uh, this week and not till Saturday and Sunday, you have to do the same thing. You got to manage the week because. Uh, a lot of teams, uh, you, you know, the length of practice to, to me is the, the crucial thing is, you know, you don't want to practice too long this time of season. We've been going since early September. So you're managing your energy level. Uh, you know, you want to make sure their players are excited when they come to the rink. And if that means it's a 40-minute practice or a 50-minute practice and you get what you need to get done, uh, so be it. So we'll manage this week and, and try to do some things now that we know our opponent. Brian. You've got Duluth, obviously, and those were, well, especially the, the Sunday game up there, that was kind of wacky. In, in this time of the year, you don't know what to expect, do you? Well, in basketball, we call it March Madness. And so, you know, if you look at the women's hockey landscape over the weekend, you saw some things that, you know, maybe you didn't anticipate or expect. And, uh, you know, if you're successful, you move on. So some of the teams out east are moving on to next weekend. And some of the teams that you thought might be moving on and, May, maybe part of the bigger picture, you know, their seasons are done. I mean, they're over with, and, uh, you know, they're looking forward to, to next year, but that's a long ways away. So, uh, yeah, I mean, our last game against Duluth was about the craziest game I've ever been involved in as a coach. Uh, just, uh, you know, the magnitude of it and the understanding, the meaning of it. Um, I'm glad I wasn't in Vegas. I'm glad I was up in Duluth and got to firsthand see that. So it was, uh, it was enjoyable, and... As I said before, I made the bus ride home uh, Sunday from Duluth, uh, uh, you know, very enjoyable. And, you know, the players earned that. And, you know, it's something that they need to be certainly aware of. That's a tough trophy to win and, uh, you know, should be very proud of their effort. And typical standard, it takes the last regular season game in the WCHA and the last few minutes to, to put it all together. But, you know, that's why you play. You just never know what the script's going to look like. You don't know what the story's going to be about until the game's over. And uh, that was a fun story to watch unfold. Uh, but uh, as we all know, uh, you know, when you start playing this time of season uh, and teams that lose uh, and their season becomes uh, over, uh, y y everything goes up a little bit. Everything goes up a notch. And understanding that if you beat an opponent, you know, their season might be over. It's uh, It makes the challenge that much more difficult. And certainly looking at the four teams that are going up to Minneapolis, uh, all four have the capabilities of winning our playoff championship. How critical has Brett Pettit's growth been to what you've been able to do this season? Just for how she has grown from last year to this year and and – her ability to, to be whatever you need her to be, I guess, on, on a couple of different lines, potentially. Yes, uh, 
you know, as I looked at this season, you know, from where we started in September, you know, there's certain things that uh, I felt that were important. And I thought, you know, Brett, whether she was playing, uh, you know, in a first line position or a second line position or a third line position was going to be uh, one of the keys to, you know, us being a successful group. And, uh, you know, when we made some switches, uh, you know, the part of January, we, we, we moved her from a you know, playing with Curl and playing with Mauerman, uh, up to playing with Watts and, and Shirley. Uh, again, it was her growth and her ability to uh, continue to grow as the season went on uh, and, and put us in a position where now you got a couple groups that are really difficult to play against. And certain people on everybody's team, you know, if they play well uh, and they're productive uh, and they have good games, it's usually uh, your best ingredients to, to be successful. I mean, you know, as, as well as Brett has played all season, uh, you know, we need to continue to have her play well because she's certainly a big part of uh, why we've been successful uh, this season. Mark, against Duluth, your club scored nine goals against the Olympic gold medal winning goaltender. That's got to give your squad a little bit of confidence going into this game on Saturday? Well, I think we talked a couple of weeks, you know, we played in three games where we only scored one goal in those three games, uh, but it wasn't because we weren't getting chances. The other goaltenders had played well, and, you know, this time of year, if your goalie plays well and you're in a one and done, uh, uh, you might get to the, the end uh, winning because your goaltender has played well. So, uh, you know, all four teams have the capability to play at a real high level. We've seen Minnesota, we've seen Ohio State. Uh, Duluth has put together some great games this year, and so, you know, if their better players are playing well and their goaltenders playing well, I mean, they can beat anybody, and so that's what makes it fun. Yeah, you know, it's like you have to play your best. Your best has to play their best, and, uh, you know, hopefully your goalie plays really well, and, you know, you live to see another day, and I think that's why it's so exciting once you get into the playoffs and you get in these scenarios where if you do that, you get excited because you get another chance to play at a trophy. Just wanted to follow up on what I asked about Brett. What can she do in these next couple of weeks to to take her her game a step higher, even to what she's done this season? And and what kind of areas do you think she can she can uh, go to there? Well, I think uh, you know she plays in her second unit of our power play. You know, has capitalized in some scenarios. Uh, you know, with her and and you know, I can name several players that you know. It's your ability to engage in every shift. And go be aggressive and, and not worry about, uh, you know, if something goes wrong, uh, you know, I'm going to let my teammates down. Now it's about playing on your toes, playing aggressive, uh, playing engaged, wanting the puck when you're out on every shift, you know, winning some face offs. And, you know, I can say that to Brett and I can say it to, you know, three or four other players that uh, if we're going to be successful, you know, these kids have to be able to go out and do that. So if I'm talking to Brett uh, after practice today, those are the things that I'm going to talk to her about. You know, when the puck drops, you have to be engaged. You know, keep your feet moving, uh, protect the puck, uh, you know, use your line mates to create scoring opportunities and really enjoy uh, this time of year. Uh, we're not going to get any better shape uh, than we are right now and so it's just a matter of going out and playing comfortable and doing uh, the things that we've been able to do consistently all season long. Mark as far as uh, Abby Rock's concerned um, she's obviously physical she's skilled at times unorthodox in that she does things that you don't see other players do is that a fair description of Abby Rock the player? Yeah those uh are very good characteristics of what you see. Uh, I think the one area I think this year especially is her ability to control the puck and manage the puck. And she uses her size, she certainly uses her strength, she uses her body to do that. So she's coming down the ice and you're trying to defend against her, her ability to, to control the puck and to protect the puck, wait for her line mates to maybe get in a better position to, for her to make a pass to them. Uh, and, especially when she gets the puck down below the goal line around the net. She just does a great job of protecting it and, uh, you know, makes it really difficult for the other teams to defend against her. And when she's on a mission and she has the puck, uh, usually some good things are happening. From having been around her for a few months now, with Daryl, what sets her apart as a competitor, as a player, as, you know, someone who keeps striving to, to reach new levels? What have you seen... Uh, out of her 
Well, I think, you know, one of the things, uh, you know, we've tried to work with her, uh, you know, especially early on in the season to get her to understand that, you know, the game has to be played 200 feet. And so when you're an offensive player and uh, you've been an offensive player for so long, it's can I do some of the other things that will help my game? And so as we back check, as we get involved in our defensive zone, as we play one-on-ones, uh, you know, uh, am I getting better in those areas? And I, I think she's done a, a good job of working, understanding it. Uh, you know, the one thing she's been able to do is she understands what's going on with the puck. She might have the puck and be able to do some things with it, but if the other team has it or, or we have it, she has an understanding of what that player is generally going to do with the puck. And uh, she anticipates very well, and obviously she's got a good stick. She passes the puck really well. And, you know, there'll be points in, in most of our games uh, where she's either on the score sheet or she's getting an opportunity to get on the score sheet. And so she's been pretty consistent in that area. But, uh, you know, just that ability to expand her game from just being offensive-minded, creating scoring chances or making plays for her teammates is that understanding, especially in our league, you have to play at the other end of the ice as well.